great pleasure to be here today. Uh, Bishop Anthony Fisher, uh, Chairman Joseph De Bruin, outgoing President David Daintree, incoming President Ryan Messmore, Reverend Fathers, members of Campion College, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates. Today is a day for congratulations. I feel as though this is part of an extended family process. It's a splendid campus uh, and we've had a wonderful mass uh, as a prelude to your graduation. I trust that you all remember this day forever. Graduation is uh, a genuine milestone in the life of a student and a day of pride for parents and family. It's an achievement that marks both a point of learning and a point of character. I think it is more important to see graduation as a beginning rather than as an end. My message to you today is to have the imagination to aim high in your life, but always think of yourself in the bigger frame of the contribution you can make to community and to society. Never belittle your liberal arts education. My own experience of life, looking back, is that contrary to some fashionable views today, a liberal arts education is more important and more relevant than ever, particularly in a world whose foundations are under such challenge. For this to be true, however, you need to be dedicated to the liberal arts as a lifelong journey and have a passion in your chosen field. Your education at Campion College has been different from the norm because it sought to find a synthesis between the world of learning and the world of faith. While this is a rare experience in Australia today at the tertiary education level, this sort of education, however, is the key to understanding the true nature of Western civilization and the forces of modernity that now shape it. I have to tell you, frankly, that liberal arts study in the wider academy at the moment is under siege, the product of financial pressures and a philosophical fracture from within. The arts, in the broadest sense, whether we're talking about disciplines with which I know a little, history, literature, law and political science, uh, suffer from the demise of traditional method and the absence now of an agreed moral framework within which intellectual argument can be heard, tested and assessed. Perhaps you will enter workplaces that no standards and values are important but are uncertain of what those standards and values should be. Being a full citizen today means having a firm and constructive view on those questions. I believe your Campion College education gives you the robust equipment for this task. The fully formed individual today is a citizen of the world, sensitive to global perspectives, but also a citizen of your neighbourhood and your community, seeking to, make, seeking to make a worthwhile contribution at your local level in your daily life. And it's vital that you have both perspectives, the wider global perspective, but also a deep sense of what's going on at the local level in your own community. As a citizen of the world, you will know that God is making a comeback. From Egypt, where I've recently been last month, to Indonesia, to China, religion, whether it be Islam, or Christianity is only gaining more traction. This isn't discussed a lot, but it is a reality in today's world. It is, I think, easy to misinterpret the secularist trend in the West as the trend in the entire world. Evidence, however, suggests that this is wrong. As a framework for explaining politics in society, 
the idea of the relentless march of secularism fails to capture what is happening in many cultures and in many countries. One of the great challenges of the 21st century, your century, will be the negotiation between religion and the state. One of the best preparations to understand this dynamic, which will play out in your own lifetime, is your liberal arts course on this campus with its explicitly religious foundation. Far from being on the margins of the 21st century world, you, I believe, will be located at its epic centre because of this education you've had. Let me conclude with some intellectual observations about the world today, the world that you will enter after graduation. My first thought is that we live in an exciting time. We live at a time of globalisation, driven by technological and financial forces. And globalisation is an enormously beneficial process with the capacity to deliver millions of people from poverty. The interesting point to make, however, is that globalisation is not leading to one global culture, just the reverse. In Europe, Asia, Africa and the Americas, we see a stronger tide of domestic cultural assertion. People are looking to their roots, they're looking to their traditions. And this sense of cultural assertion is often tied in to rising nationalism. Indeed, in much of the world, this cultural revival and religion are rising together. Witness the Arab Spring. I think in the developing world today, there is a profound quest, both for material progress, combined with a domestic cultural resurgence and a suspicion of modern Western values. My second observation is that in the West today, the classic notion, the prized idea of the secular state is now under challenge. And this is a very serious event. The secular state is fundamental to progress and to liberty in the West. The idea is that the state must be neutral among believers of different faiths, and it must be neutral between believers and non-believers. This, this separates religious practice from state power. It guarantees religious freedom, and in its originating purpose, it allows religion to flourish without fear or intimidation. However, we now face in the West a new movement, arguing that the state should become not neutral, but it should become an anti-religious force, seeking to drive religion from the public square. Many people, many columnists in our media today champion this position, some because they understand what it means, others because they are ignorant of its true significance. However, this argument is a perversion of the meaning of the secular state and it is a risk to personal and religious liberty and social stability in the West. I mention this because I think the phenomenon is now established that it is deeply misunderstood. My third and final observation, my third and final observation today is the need to recognise that more than ever, the practice of government requires a moral foundation. It requires an ethical base. In our public life now, there is much discussion of values. The reason is easy to see. Our politicians have been called upon to take decisions on human rights, global people movements, gay marriage, national security and civil liberties, human reproductive issues, biotechnology, and the role of religious schools and institutions, just to mention some of the many issues that come across the desk of our politicians. In this situation, ethics, values and morals are central 
to all such decisions. You should participate in these debates as individuals and support the right of your faith and your church to express its views as well. Our former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd put secularist politicians on notice a couple of years ago when he said Christian views must be heard and they must be respected in the public debate. That statement from a former Prime Minister is particularly important. Any effort to silence such views is tantamount to intellectual repression and a denial of secular state pluralism. The world you are entering is turbulent, exciting and filled with opportunities for young people. Honour your education, your faith, your church, your family, your country. Good luck and God bless to you all.